Stargate. I'm your humble host, Mark Brenner. Today, we have a very interesting story, uh, program for you. Uh, tonight's guest will be Gregory Ship. He was a, a close friend and colleague of mine. He also have a, has an extensive background in history, world and, and per, investigative research. Tonight, we're going, to be we're going to be discussing the Betty and Barney Hill UFO abduction case, one of the first renowned cases of UFO abduction ever in, that, to be reported in the mainstream. In our second segment this evening, we're going to be discussing a paranormal investigation that me and him personally investigated years ago when we were doing our investigations in, a, in Cumming, Georgia. In, the, in a memorial cemetery. We had some very amazing experiences, and we're going to discuss that in our second segment today. It, it, without further ado, I would like to introduce Gregory Ship. Thank you, Greg, for being with me, and welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. So, Greg, uh, you moved to New Hampshire uh, a while back, and it's been a while since we've actually done any investigations and everything. Um, I'm really, really thankful that you're here uh, tonight for the audience. And if you don't mind, could you give the audience a little background in your and in, in just in, in general and also in your uh, background in your uh, the research in any of the fields of paranormal that you've been interested in and that you've done research with? Well, um, I studied history at Georgia State University and I was in the education system for a little bit. And um, I kind of drifted into going back into grad school to study being an accountant. And in my spare time, I study a lot on American history and uh, European history. And um, I've always had an interest in the paranormal since I was a rather young child and probably had a few experiences of my own at, at a few times in my life, especially uh, between with you and I. And one of the stories that we'll be getting into, and um, I, it's something that I've always liked to research on and try to delve into and try to find explanations for. So that's sort of my 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 side hobby as well. Well, that's really interesting because one thing that I've you know we've been friends for about ten years now. Um, one thing that I've always found really striking about you is your your knowledge and your passion and drive for history. And I think that's very important when, when you're investigating and researching the uh, field, the paranormal field. Um, later on, I do want to get into some more, some of our uh, our paranormal, our investigation we did at that um, at the Cumming Memorial Cemetery in Cumming, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And also, maybe I want to talk about that UFO sighting we had uh, close to my mom and dad's house that one night on the lake. Um, but for right now. Our first segment. I want. Let's talk. You've been researching the Betty and Barney Hill uh, UFO abduction case, which is the first mainstream reported uh, UFO abduction case in history. Um, so I want to set this. I'm going to kind of set the put a setting out here for for the audience. It's uh, and uh, they lived there. The couple lived in Portsmouth, uh, New Hampshire. Um, the the uh, incident happened on September 19th, 1961, around 10.30 p.m. And they're, from my understanding, they were driving home from, from vacation. And what happened? Well, they were driving home from Montreal, and they had stopped for a short period of time in Vermont to get some coffee. They were doing a long haul all the way back to their house in uh, Portsmouth. And along the way through the White Mountains, um, Barney Hill had noticed a bright white light up in the sky following them. And for a while, he thought it might have been a commercial plane or a helicopter or possibly a satellite that had um, run off, of course. Um, but over time, they both him and his wife, Bay, also noticed that they, this object would tend to zigzag and probably even hide amongst the tree lines before showing up again. Um, they stopped a few times and used Barney's binoculars to try to find out what it is, but to no avail, they really had no idea what this thing was until later on, this object had uh, 
started to hover above this tree line. Um, Barney had gone out of his car to investigate, and he noticed that this object, which he described as as big as a jet, but as flat as a pancake. Um, he also noticed that there were individuals looking at him through a window, and he said that he um, had received communication through him, but through telepathy. Um, he said he had tried to raise his firearm, but for some reason he couldn't. But he was told telepathically to use his binoculars to see and look at the object. And he said he noticed uh, humanoid individuals with gray suits. He had eventually he was startled by this and he ran back to his car, told his wife that they were about to be captured. They okay. dropped it. Okay. I want to. I want to. I want to pause this for just a moment, if you don't mind. Sure, sure. So, Betty and Barney Hill are pulled over to the side of the road, and Barney. He would now. Let's. Let's. Do, I'd like to. I'd like to kind of talk about who Barney was real quick. Uh, okay. and Barney was a. Uh, my understanding, they were uh, a mixed couple. Um, they were. Uh, Barney was a uh, civil rights uh, activist, I believe. Yes. And uh, he worked for the postal service. And, uh, bet and anyway, they were, they were very credible. They were credible people. Um, all the people, what I read about them and, and maybe you can confirm this and, or back this up. They were a uh, very, uh, trustworthy, uh, upstanding, uh, people. Um, now they're pulled over on the side of this road on this highway. Um, they were, uh, is it? We're, we're, they were up in the mountains, correct? Correct. Okay, good. Okay. Well, so when, my whenever after they pulled over and they, and Barney is looking through these binoculars uh, at this object, could you go into more detail of how it, the object looked? Was it a saucer shaped a craft or what kind of what, what did it look like in more detail? Uh, according to the sketch that Barney had drawn for uh, the hypnot, the hip, uh, I'm sorry, the therapist, um, it was a saucer-shaped object uh, with large windows to actually see individuals in the craft. Um, so there it, were windows in this in this craft where they, yeah. he could see um, humanoid type figures, for lack of a better term. Yeah, I think looking at the picture that he had drawn, it kind of looks like the top of the uh, the Seattle Space Needle, where it says it's a, it's a flat saucer shaped with windows around it. That's kind of what it looks like to me, based on the picture. And uh, they would have like little red lights on the sides, as described by Barney. Okay, so we're talking about you know many people who have reported UFOs. I've seen, I've had many many UFO sightings. I've seen some that look like a, a saucer shape that were saucer shaped. I've seen some that look like orbs and we'll, we'll get into a little bit more of that later in the program. But, um, so they're standing outside of their car and Barney's looking at this object. What was Betty doing? Uh, was she, was she getting nervous or, or what was going on with her while he was looking at the, at this craft and these occupants through the, uh, binoculars. Oh, Betty was in the car at the time, so she was far from it. But um, both he and Barney were pretty um, startled when this object started to follow them. And um, the nights they had afterwards, after this encounter, she had disturbing dreams of being operated on, um, but really had no idea as to why she was having these dreams. Well, uh, you know, that's really interesting because a lot of people, uh, I've never been under hypnotic reg regression. I've had some, uh, there's been several incidents in my past, and this is something I'm not going to get into in detail in this pro in this particular uh, episode, but in a future episode, I'm, I'm, I'm going to elaborate on it. But I know that sometimes when people have these uh, abduction experiences, it'll start as something that just happens. It might be a UFO sighting. It might be just something that happens at just at a, something bizarre that seems out of place that happens that they just don't, people just don't know what to think about it. And then all of a sudden, bam, you're lost one hour, 30, uh, two hours, even up, I've heard even up to a day. Mm -hmm. 
how long of t- how much time uh, did, did they were they missing at, into, at, from start to finish from the uh, incident? Uh, from start to finish from the incident, um, I really could not say based on what I've been reading. I could have been maybe an hour, maybe even two. That's kind of what I heard, and I and I just and I, I've kind of heard the same thing. It was a, if they were missing a significant chunk of time, it's it's almost like time was altered. That the uh, the, the the dimension of time, the fourth dimension, was altered for those two individuals. Right. After move get back to the incident, we 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 have these two people. They're on the side of the road. They're looking at their you know. Barney, I would imagine, from my understanding, he was flipping out. He's looking, and he and he's trying to stay calm and collective for his wife, and trying to be the rock, her mm-hmm. rock, and not and not get uh, too excited or 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 show an immense amount of fear. What happened after that? Uh, right after that, Barney had returned back to the car, and they had driven down the road, eventually being followed by this object before they heard what sound like rhythmic beats coming from the car's trunk. Eventually, both the hills had gotten drowsy and had lost consciousness. And it was later on, probably about maybe like an hour or two, they woke up 35, mil- 35 miles down the road from where they were previously. Good gosh. That's, that's incredible. Um, that's very similar to thousands upon thousands of other uh cases of missing time that uh that i've i've heard of and even some similar to some uh, experiences i've had myself um so when they got when when they got home they got home out like a very significant a lot more much later than they the trip should have taken them from when they stopped previously um I my with my research into this case, I it, somebody who was investigating the case actually I heard brought a uh, compass out to their vehicle where uh, the trunk you know you said you were you made mention that there was that that vibrating sensation or sound that came from their trunk. Well, is it I heard I heard that whenever. Uh, the inve- the people who were investigating this this case uh, came to, to their uh, their home that they held a compass over the trunk. Yeah. And what happened after that? Tell me what happened. It said the that the uh, the compass started to spin out of control when they got close to it. That that's fascinating because that means that there's some very there had to be some kind of really intense uh, electromagnetic. Uh, energy emanating from it as if it was mag- heavily magnetized. Um, you know, I don't know a lot about, a whole lot about uh, 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 electromagnetic frequency or, or energy or anything, but it seems to me like whatever it calls that had to have ma- heavily magnetized. Do you know, based on your knowledge, what would cause something like that to happen? Um, that I would not be able to explain. Unfortunately, I wish I did know that. <laughs> That's okay. Cause it, something I, I, I can only imagine what would have caused it. Maybe some sort of, you know, like in Star Trek, they had these tractor beams. I, I wonder if it was something to that effect that, that, uh, magnetized the, the their vehicle because it'd have to be heavily magnetized for that compass to spin. Right. So, after this incident happened, and they after when they when they started reporting this, um, they went under hypnosis. They mm-hmm. went under hypnotic regression. And this was two uh, two years later. Afterwards, this happened. Oh, it was, it, it was two years. Okay. Uh, yeah. So when they went out, they went under, uh, they went under hypnotic regression separately. Correct. Correct. Okay. Let's start with let's start with Betty. Betty. My when she went under, I that she went into detail as details as far as uh, some horrible medical experiments that were done on her or something like to that effect. Yeah, and also she had some sort of communication with uh, one of the uh, with one or several of the entities. Can you uh, can you go into detail with that? 
Well, based on actually both Barney and Betty is that they would take uh, samples of skin, hair, uh, toenail clippings. Um, at one point, she said that, and this is actually can be, I think, can be backed up by Barney, is that they um, removed the top part of his teeth. He actually wore dentures and saying that the uh, male subject's teeth easily came out, to which she would say, well, they didn't know what dentures were for elderly human beings. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, what's interesting to note is that after this had taken place, that they had a preoccupation with their body when they, um, when they would get dressed, when they would shower for, for no reason, just unable to explain why they would be concerned about their body. Um, so, th when, so they had some, there were some profound psychological effects to say the least after this experience, um, yeah. after they went under hypnotic regression. Um, so, Barney was saying, was talking, I remember, I've seen, um, I've heard audio from his that was recorded from his abduction his hypnotic regression um it, it was back kind of elaborating on what you just said i it was my understanding that they did some very very evasive and horrible uh medical experiments uh taking uh betty said that they injected some sort of long needle into her navel yes yeah um, I possibly extracting some eggs uh, from her. Uh, Barney, uh, he he made mention and reported that they uh, extracted um, sperm samples from him. Yeah. Uh, this is this stuff is very evasive, and I'd even go to say I'd even go as far to say hostile. Um, what is your opinion about that? Uh, based on that, I would be concerned. Um, but at the same time, though, it's I think they were trying to understand what the what the human body was and how it functioned. Um, though, what's more terrifying is the fact that they were on live subjects rather than on dead subjects. Um, but it was incredibly invasive, and it left a very negative mental scar on both Barney and Betty. Um, I can imagine. Um, I know that I have, after some some incidents that has happened to me, and, and again, and I'm going to save a lot of this for another podcast because it's kind of a completely different story altogether. I have some physical evidence of, of some things that may have happened to me. I'm I've never been under hypnotic regression. I don't know precisely what has happened to me, but I do have some. I do have uh, some. Uh, marks on my uh, body that are questionable after having some bizarre, even paranormal experiences in my uh, early teenage years. Mm -hmm. But um, after I, I know it's my understanding that years after this, that um, their niece, uh, Kath, I think her name's Kathleen Martin, if I'm not mistaken, um, she uh, has been very active in the UFO community and. She said that they have had that the family, uh, that family in general has had a history of missing time and, and UFO experiences. Um, do you uh, have you have you, is your research to brought you into her uh, into her her uh, findings and and things that she's uh, uncovered and 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 brought to in the UFO community? I never. I haven't gone that far into detail um, in terms of looking at her niece's findings. I was uh, focusing mostly on the hills themselves, unfortunately. But that's something that I would have to definitely take a look into now that you mentioned it. Well, Kath, I think her, I believe I do believe her name is Kathleen Martin. Um, in, in a future uh, in a future uh, uh, episode, we maybe we should look back into that and and investigate that because. She has been very, very active in the UFO community, like I said, for many years. And she, 
she has come out uh, years ago and she has admitted that she herself has had some, some unusual experiences with UFOs and missing time, which goes back to my theory that I believe that, that these incidents are not, most of the time, aren't isolated incidents. I believe that it is a family, like akin to a family curse. In mm-hmm. other words, it doesn't just happen to you. It happens to your children, I mean, to your grandchildren, your, grand, your grandfather, your grandmother, your aunts and uncles, and then it passes on to another generation. Mm-hmm. Uh, wh- what do you make of that? It's an interesting, it's an interesting thought. Um, I'm not entirely sure on that one. Um, I've heard of, in terms of like the paranormal, I've heard of like ghosts, and I've had some family experiences with that. But with the extraterrestrials, I'm not entirely sure of. I can't really comment on that one. Well, after my in my 20 years of plus of investigative research. Um, a lot of times that these these aren't like I said these are not isolated cases. More if it's happening to you, more than likely it's happened to your your parents, your grandparents, uh, your brothers, your sisters, and then as you get older and you have kids and grandkids of your own, you, it, there's a high likelihood it's going to happen to them as well. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a that's a very interesting. I think we need to do. So I think this definitely this case definitely warrants more research. Um, now Betty Hill and Betty and Barney, they're both deceased now. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, before they made a, they actually made a film, a made for TV movie. Uh, I believe it's called, um, let me see, let me pull this information up. I, I have the notes right here. Um, I believe it's called the interrupted journey or something to that effect. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah, yeah there was- that's the book. There was a book written. I apologize. Yeah, it was there... a book called The Interrupted Journey. And then in 1975, there's a made-for-TV film called The UFO Incident. And it starred, um, it had some, it had one really big actor in it, um, uh, Lawrence Fishburne. Lawrence Fishburne was the actor in it, I believe. And he he portrayed Barney Hill. Um, that that right, that's a uh, really interesting uh, book from my understanding. I have yeah, that's on my list of books to read. Um, but anyways, um, at this point, do you have any other comments you'd like to make on this uh, case before we move forward to the next segment? Uh, I uh, not really. Um, though I just find that as a very fascinating story as I currently live in New Hampshire and. Uh, it's very close to home. It's kind of why I want to look into the story. It's literally right down the road from you. Yeah. That's, that is so awesome. That's, that's so fascinating to me. Yeah. Well, now that we have heard, we have heard this evening, uh, we've heard so far, we have heard the story of Betty and Barney Hill and a, and a general understanding of what occurred and transpired during that UFO abduction case. Um, I definitely believe that this is a very important case that in the history of ufology and the paranormal in general. Um, years ago, before you moved away, me and you did some investigative research and some investigations. And I remember, I remember we went to the cut, and we, we both lived uh, in and around Cumming, Georgia, which is north of Atlanta. For those of you who are not familiar with Cumming, Georgia. It's in Forsyth County, Georgia, uh, approximately 45 minutes north of Atlanta. <clears throat> and I believe me and you, we did some research. I remember we, that me and you were re- putting our minds together and doing, some, doing a ton of research. And we found not one, but several places around in Forsyth County and around Forsyth County they had a, a very, very long history of paranormal phenomenon. And one of the ones that, um, that I was most interested in was the Cumming Memorial Cemetery over in downtown Cumming. And I remember that night, we went out there with our, cam- with our uh, cell phones and our cameras and whatnot, and we took a lot of pictures, uh, had a lot of amazing um, uh, experiences. And... We at one point we split up, and I took 
the northern side of that cemetery and you took the other side. Now, yeah. where I was, I was in the oldest uh, part of the cemetery. Um, there was a history, one of the most common things that, that this occurred there that's been reported was the apparition of a, of a man with a beard holding like a Bible or something. Uh, do you remember that? I saw him. Yep. Yep. I saw him. But it was for like a split second where I was moving my head from one one area to the next, and I just spotted him in the blink of an eye, and he was gone. It was um, that's where I I think I I remember calling you over the uh, the phone. It's like, hey, can you come get me? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he was crying like a little girl. No, I'm just he was He uh, we we I I had some unusual. I remember standing in the northern part of that cemetery where I was at, and we had the most, I felt the most incredible sensation. It's like my whole body was just, it almost felt like I was magnetized. I, I don't know how else to describe it. Uh, the hairs of my body were standing up. It was unusual. It was a chilly night that night, but not, it wasn't cold. And in this one area, I kept feeling just a really cold spot where it just didn't feel natural. Did you have any experiences like that when we were there? Um, it was different. Uh, not to that level, though. Um, I was with my phone, and I was just uh, asking questions, trying to interact with whatever was in that area. and uh, wasn't getting anything. And I said, well, this is your last chance uh, before I leave. And I and there was no wind at the time, but I felt my shirt getting tugged and I'm in an open area with nothing for me to get caught on. So that for me was a bit of an unusual thing for that to happen. Yeah, I remember I remember you I remember at, at that point you did you, you told me that you had some, you know, some personal experiences more so than I did. Um, I had that, un, you know. At the end of the day, science, we have to have conclusive proof. And we did have some proof. Unfortunately, my hard drive that had all the pictures we took uh, got crashed, and I was unable to retrieve it. And I, oh. I, I regret that so much. But I remember that night, in addition to the personal experiences me and you both had, we also got some very uh, anomalous photographs. I think we took around the, somewhere around the neighborhood of probably about 280 photographs that night. Yeah. Yep. And I remember I scrutinized and I went through every single photograph. And out of those photographs, we came up with about nine photo, uh, photos that had anomalous, anomalies in it. Do you remember that? I remember noticing a few um, a few orbs. They were like very small, kind of, kind of what would be hard to find um, unless you were looking very, very, very closely. I remember noticing those with you at the time when we were reviewing them. And I think uh, Sandy as well picked them up as well. Yes. Um, I remember before my hard drive crashed, my, I had my wife, uh, my wife look at it, and this is now, my wife and I worked together at the time, but um, some of the photographs that, that I that I um, uh, examined, one of them, several of them, about three of them actually had clearly had faces in the photograph. One of them looked like a, a bearded man. Mm -hmm. It looked just like a bearded man. Yep. And it was it was remarkable. Now, the orbs that you were, you mentioned something about the orbs. Now, I didn't see those orbs. The ones I saw were green, were green colored. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of tell if something's, a, you know, if you look at enough photographs, you can tell if, if, if a photograph has dust particulates in it or if it's something reflecting off something. These photographs with these green balls of light that we caught that we captured i could not debunk it in any way shape or form how about you what what was your thoughts on those those were pretty weird to find on very clear night i know they weren't bugs it wasn't dust 
it was just the way the manner in which I found them just kind of made me uh, a bit curious. Well, it, it was very interesting because we um, the one of the one of the most amazing photographs, and I'm going to try if for a future in a future uh, episode. I'm going to try to recover some of these photographs and 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 post them on our webs on my on the website I'm working on. Um, I am going to try if I can recover those. I think we ought to come back. I think we need to have you come back. And we uh, we need to go through those photographs and show them to the audience and and, and show them exactly what we found what we found in that investigation because it was remarkable. The photographs, the nine photographs that we picked out, were I could were uh, were I was unable to debunk them. You aren't able to debunk them. You know, I'm not a professional. I know I have a general understanding of, of science and how things work in the universe. You have maybe the same or maybe a little bit better understanding of science. But when it comes to photography, like I said, you can tell when something is a dust particulate, if it's something reflecting off of an object, these things usually are quite obvious. Um, you can tell by, by the way things. Now, one of the lights, I remember one of the photographs had the green light, the green ball of light at the bottom. And then you had, a, there was a, I remember there was the face, a clear face, but in, inside that other, another ball of light next to it, there was a face inside that light. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. I remember you showing me that. And the one I saw that I picked out of those photographs, it had, the face was very chilling. It almost looked like what they call a gray alien. It had the, these big black eyes, or, or bl a big almond-shaped eyes, I should say. And then um, it had like a little bit of a slip for a mouth. Mm. Looks kind of like what they call the grays. Yeah. Yep. That was remarkable. Mm. Well, let's go. Let's go back a little bit further, Greg, if you don't mind. Let's talk about uh, UFO sightings. Um, Coming Georgia has a history of UFO sightings. If you go on the Mutual UFO Network website, the Georgia chapter, there's a pretty rich history of UFO sightings in and around uh, Coming Georgia and Forsyth County. Um, I remember, just to give the audience a little background on, on, on this uh, situation, I, at the time I was single, I was staying with, I was living with my mom and dad and I was, we were working together at a retailer, at a major retailer. And we, um, I kept, I remember coming to work one day and telling you, Greg, uh, you're not going to believe what I've been seeing almost every night. Do you remember that day? I think I would do. Yeah. So I was in there. I, I would, there was a, where my parents lived in the house I lived in, I had kind of a section of the house to myself. I'd walk outside every night on a, on a beautiful, clear night. I used to love to go across the street. There was a clubhouse, and behind the clubhouse, there was this big lake. And on a clear night, there, there, was, there was not any trees around there. You could see for a pretty good a little ways off. Now, what I was witnessing was an object that looked like a, an orange orb, and it would manifest and it sometimes it would move around and then sometimes it would just blink out and then reappear in another part of the sky. Now, when I asked you at work, I said, Greg, please come hang out with me tonight. I will prove to you something is going on. What do you remember about that night? I remember coming to your house and I remember you showing me these 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 lights and I I was trying to think whether this might have been like a helicopter or a military uh, a military aircraft. I remember asking you that, but it's just the way that it moved was just a bit bizarre for it to be any kind of aircraft. Just I agree, and and the way the object was behaving was very mysterious. It would it it would simply sometimes it would move. And they move really quickly to one spot, and it stop, and then it just go like that, and just implode, like it, like it was, just, like it was 
phasing in and out of our time space. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that I, that's very common. I, could it be, could there be, what is your theory on, on how that works? Do you think that there might be portals or some sort of access to, from our time space to another time and space or another vibrational frequency? Well, I also, I do believe in, in the, the use of portals and wormholes. Um, I'm also wondering as well if it's a possibility of the use of a cloaking device, possibly. That's fascinating. And that it's funny how Star Trek got it right on so many ends. <laughs> Gene Roddenberry, it's almost like he, he was able to look up here into space and time and see what the future holds for right. technology because we our military right now has technology to a, of camouflaging a, a cloaking technology uh mm -hmm. for just like you're you're describing they they have this technology they've experimented with this technology it's it's remarkable um be able imagine being able to have a tank and all of a sudden up oh, it's gone it's disappeared but it's still there right right this technology uh, is definitely out there. I've had other UFO sightings around that area. Um, I had, I remember one night we were, uh, this is after work. Mm -hmm. I was walking down the road and there was a deputy sheriff that would park all, on a, almost a nightly basis at the end of the street we lived on. And I was going out there talking to him and we just kind of were talking. We just kind of got on the subject somehow of you i asked him i said look you know i've been having these these sightings lately have you had or heard any reports of it and and the man and the, he was a real nice guy and he said he's he, he kind of looked at me and said yep you know we have had some reports uh of ufo sightings and it by god if it was just almost right after that he got out of his car and we were talking and we looked up and this object there was a triangular shaped object that had lights in each corner of the object came right above us as another, as a man and his kids and his dog were walking by us. They saw it. I saw it. The deputy sheriff saw it. Mm -hmm. And it was just a remarkable experience. I, I'll never forget it. It was, it was right above us and it stopped for a moment. It stopped. And then it just, it, you know, a helicopter, you're going to hear the, the helicopter blades vibrating in the wind. You're going to, you're going to feel that you can feel the vibration of the ground. I was in the military. Mm -hmm. um, I've been around helicopters a lot. I know how it feels, even when they're way above where you're at, you're going to feel those vibrations. You're going to feel the ground shaking because it's so they're so, the, the blades are so powerful. Um, I think that I really, I really feel like what we saw that night with, with myself, the deputy sheriff, that's a total of seven people, including myself, that saw this object and it was totally silent. There was no noise, zero noise whatsoever. And this object came right above us and it just stops. And I remember looking at the guy that was, that was, that happened to be walking across the road. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you see what I see? And mm -hmm. he looks up and he says, yes, I do. It's probably a, he said, he said he thought it was a drone and, and for, it could have been, we got drones the size of football fields. We have <laughs> huge drones. Um, there's a lot of speculation that the Phoenix lights that were showed, that were seen uh, in Phoenix, Arizona uh, back in the nineties that, they saw this object that was a boomerang shape. They said you could park 2747s on that. It was so big. You could park like seven jet aircraft, like, tw like 20 jet aircraft mm -hmm. on that thing. It was so big. Um, but it was real silent. All the witnesses, even um, uh, the uh, the gentleman, Fife Simonton, I believe his name, but he was the governor of uh, Arizona at the time. He even saw this object and mm -hmm. he, he said that uh, very similar to what I saw, there was no noise. There, it was, it was like the noise, whatever this was, was so massive. 
what do we have in the military that would be that big and not make noise? I can't even imagine for that for that type of for that type of aircraft if it ever existed. Well, Br Greg, I'm going to tell you, um, I. I think as the days come, there's more and more UFO sightings that are coming out. We have the United States Navy that recently came out and several, uh, we have about six or seven pilots that are doing training exercises and they saw these tic-tac shaped objects that were doing maneuvers that would kill a human being. I mean, we're talking about these, these objects that would take off at such a high rate of speed, they would go underwater, they would do all kinds of stuff, they were playing games with uh with these naval uh, aircraft they were doing training maneuvers and they released the, the radar feed images they released everything the navy declassified this incident it was on the news even the, the news channels even even broad did you uh did you ever get wind of that i did hear about that um from one of my co-workers he actually mentioned it and uh i actually think i believe i got a. Uh, Got to watch the video and just being blown away by all of that. It's just, it's, it's not something that any type of normal aircraft could do, as far as I'm concerned. I think in the future, we're going to, uh, that Project Stargate is going to uh, produce some, uh, is going to make a, uh, I think in the future, we're going to, I'm going to produce a, uh, a special podcast uh, showing that footage. It's so remarkable. I want, I want everybody to see this, this, uh, this footage. I think it's remarkable. And I'm, I'm real, I think it's important for everybody to see because it's a lot of times the military historically in the past decades, they've been so wishy-washy and uh, about UFO stuff. They had Project Blue Book, uh, the an official, invest they've had so many different investigations uh, into the unidentified, now they're calling it unidentified aerial phenomena instead of UFOs. Um, <clears throat> the, we have... Uh, the United Kingdom, they have released almost every one of their files on UFOs. We have Nick Pope over in the United Kingdom, <laughs> who was the, worked for the Ministry of Defense. He said he was put in charge of a UFO investigative program in the United Kingdom. Um, he, he studied and investigated UFO sightings from radar, from eyewitnesses. They had just tons of files and they released them. Mm -hmm. I want to see the United States government release more of our files on UFOs. Me too. Well, Greg, I, I, I really appreciate you uh, being with me tonight. And uh, I, it was, it was good to, good to connect with you reconnect with you. And um, uh, you did some great research and um, thank you for bringing this information uh, to the, to the audience. And um, thank you for being a uh, for ha for being on Project Stargate. We, I'm looking forward to having you back again sometime. Thank you. It's my pleasure. I'd love to be back and reconnect and uh, discuss more topics on whatever catches our fancy, paranormal wise. I think one day in the future, I would like to do. I would like to uh, talk to you in a future episode. Let's talk about the. Uh, uh, North American Stonehenge. I think that'd be a great topic. Uh, a lot of people have had uh, a host of different types of mystical and paranormal experiences around that area. Who built it? Uh, why they built it? There's there's so many theories, and uh, that'd be something that's up there in your neck of the woods. We could we could look into sometime. Absolutely, definitely. Well, Greg, thank you again for being with us. Uh, and if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Uh, before, feel free to leave comments. If you have some uh, subjects that you'd be interested in in Project Stargate bringing uh, to light, please uh, leave a comment below. And th Greg, you have a great evening, and thank you for watching Project Stargate. Until next time, I'm Mark Brenner, your host, signing off.